advice to young chefs from the age of 16 to sort of 29, 30 is 14 years of a sponge. You're absorbing knowledge. Don't take a job for the sake of money. Don't worry about earning 500 pound a month or a year more somewhere else. Go and get knowledge because that becomes a bigger passport for everything. The money will come once you've mastered your craft and you become incredibly talented. Work for big chefs and find a different level of comfort. When things get too comfortable and you're still living with your parents and you've still got your first job and you don't want to move out because everything's too comfortable, get out. Put yourself in a strange situation in the middle of Barcelona. Put yourself in the middle of Paris, put yourself in the middle of Belgium and see what's available. And it's amazing how much confidence it gives you and more importantly, it's great to, to, to sort of eat and travel at the same time. Fantastic. My first passion uh, before food was, uh, was football. But I was always uh, a good eater, a great lover of food, and I grew up uh, partly in Scotland, partly down south. So we had that sort of token of appreciation of home cooked food. Um, then I was very lucky to get on a foundation course, spending the last year of my school at a foundation course, uh, studying maths, English two and a half days a week, and then learning to cook for two and a half days a week. And it was a sort of new experiment. Now we had trouble uh, with buying my first set of whites and chef knives, and we depended on the Banbury round table to come up with something like 85, 90 pounds that mum and dad didn't have to get my first set of whites. So um, I still remember that day now uh, and how ecstatic and happy I was when I got given my first set of whites, my knives, and all of a sudden I wanted to go on that mission. Football was a sort of uh, huge burning ambition and I was trying to you know, you decide. Yourself, yeah, I had a horrific injury where I smashed my cartilage and, and then all of a sudden, you know, what do you do? You sit there and get bitter, but I had this little burning desire of this sort of uh, chef um, this, this, this ambition and then I sort of channeled that frustration from football into cooking in, in a way that I, I, just, I just wanted to learn. Um, the foundation course was huge, did a sitting guild 706, um, I was a mature uh, part-time student and mum and dad didn't have the money to send me to college full-time. So um, it, was, it was hard but what I did do is take a job in the industry. I worked six days a week and went to college one day a week. So then everything started becoming clearer. Got my qualifications, the basic, and then went to London. And that's where it really just you know, took off. Um, chefs are the world's worst delegators. So we have these sort of recipes in our mind that we're not very good at writing down and becoming consistent. The importance of putting recipes together establishes a consistent high mark in terms of cooking standards. So putting a recipe together, fine tuning it is paramount. Teaching somebody that recipe is even greater. The art of success in terms of business is the delegation. I've got 1,750 uh, chefs and waiters in my team and I need to teach young chefs the importance of how to cook properly. The first thing we do is teach them how to taste. If they don't understand how it tastes perfectly and they shouldn't be cooking it. But if you know how something tastes perfectly, you'll cook it 10 times better. So we have a bit of an old fashioned scenario. We focus on taste and then we cook. When you get all this knowledge and the advice for young chefs that are excited about opening their own business, don't shoot too high. Restaurants become successful because they cook within the vicinity they're sat within. Don't start reaching for stars and stripes. Focus on your customers. They're your biggest critics. Secondly, keep it local. Become the best bistro. Then after the bistro, take it up a little level. But make sure your customers and your brigade go up with you. Okay. Don't stand and shoot too high. Okay. They'll come back to bite you on the arse. That takes years to become a great chef. Uh, what you need to do is establish confidence in, in, in yourself. Uh, cooking is an amazing journey and don't think you can learn it within three or four years. It's like studying medicine. It's over a 10 to 15 year period. I'm 42 years of age and I'm still learning new exciting things now that I bring back to the fold. But more importantly, vision I think. Um, I didn't think French was important at school and I kick myself now because I went to live in France for three years and became bilingual but I wish I'd studied harder with a second language on my belt. That gives you a different culture, gives you a completely different level of confidence. Learning French, French cuisine, mannerism, and cooking in a very robust, uh, tenacious way. So yeah, vision and open-mindedness. And we never cut corners. The minute you start cutting corners in food, time out. There's no worse job to have than to cut corners in food. So attention to detail, an amazing, exciting journey. One of the very few jobs anywhere in the world that you can travel, 
Get paid and experience phenomenal food anywhere in the world. Brilliant.